All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. All right, so Chris and I are here, and I'm going to kick it off with our first topic, which is, um, so one thing I'm doing in business right now is sales and selling. And a book I started to read is called Spin Selling. Um, some of you sales guys may already know what I'm talking about, and you're like, Alex, this is so elementary. But um, for those of you who don't know, um, Spin stands for Situation problem, implication, and need payoff. Now, in sales, our goal is to really, you know, facilitate somebody realizing that they have a problem and that how our product can solve their problem and ideal, like just most optimally run a sales call or sales conversation, et cetera, right? And this is particularly uh, applicable and, and primarily focused on high ticket sales. So this isn't necessarily if you're selling something like for $50 or something and whatever, but it can really work in, in small ticket sales as well. But so situation, problem, implication, need payoff. Why and and what else? So another thing that this book talks about and one of the first chapters talks about uh, closing in sales, you know, a lot of times uh, salespeople are very eager to ABC always be closing. Um, but if you're anything like me, you kind of get a, a distaste for hard closing, uh, right? It just feels bad. And if the person doesn't buy, it's like you've kind of burnt the bridge. You know, you, you tried to hard sell them. No one likes being hard sold in my opinion. Um, it feel, you feel pressured, you know, um, and this book, like, oh, you oh, know, says, you, what is hard selling? Can you kind of hard, describe, I don't even, I hard, hear people say that, but what is that? Hard selling or hard closing is, um, kind of using kind of almost, um, too assumptive and, and pressureful like techniques to get someone to pay right now. You know, like they may, they may have questions still, or they may be on the fence. And for you to pressure them and say, Hey man, like, but you told me this is a problem that you've been looking to solve in your business. Right. And you're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, well, Hey, you know, we have a payment op, we have a payment plan and a pay in full option. Which one's it going to be today? We got to make a decision today. You know, um, now it doesn't always necessarily have to be like pressureful, you know, I'm trying to convince you right here now, but even just like going for the clothes multiple times. So if, if we're say on a date, Christian, and I'm like, Hey, you want to go back to my place? And you're like, um, I'm not sure. Like I, I'm still enjoying my ice cream and I'm like, okay, no problem. And then we keep talking, we keep talking. And then again, I'm like, all right, so you want to go back to my place again? And they're like, um, I mean, I'm still just chilling. I'm chill. I don't need to, you know, and I just keep going for the close and trying to close when it's clearly not closed. Okay. So spin selling is all about asking questions that actually gets the prospect mentally to the point where they are ready to move forward. So you, you don't have to hard close. They're already ready to go home with you. You know what I mean? Um, and so situation questions they talk about in the book spin, the first part is, um, you know, they're not as quite as necessary as you really need. So if you're a business, Chris, I'm not going to ask you, so how many employees do you guys have? Okay, cool. And when did you found the company? Okay, cool. And, um, who is your founder? What do they do in their spare time? You know, I'm not asking like, you know, background information and situation based questions, because how does that have to do with why they're on the sales call? You know, it's, it's a, like, if, if I hop on the sales call, and I'm interested in your product and you're asking me about my company size, about this and that, it's like, that's cool and all. I'm happy to give you context about my business, but how does this actually relate to the problem? Because a lot of times those situation questions don't. Okay. Now moving on problem questions. Um, problem questions are based around, well, what problem are you actually experiencing? So if I have a cavity in my tooth and, you Wait, know, but Sorry, but what what are some like examples of situation questions? How big is your company? When did you guys found? Who founded you? Um, what are you guys currently doing for that solution? You know, I thought uh, you said that wasn't good. Yeah, they're not good. Oh, so so in spin selling, you want to avoid the S. You don't want to do. Something. You want to you want to minimize them to only relevant questions. Um, okay, yes. gotcha. You want to you want to be very efficient with them. So just like, actually, just what you need, but nothing more. I've never heard of this method before, so I, I literally I'm literally taking notes. Yeah. Um. So I and go. Chris, I wanted to talk about this with you, so um, I definitely would. I want to teach you as well as well as our viewers, but um, so we're minimizing, we're being very efficient with our situational questions, right? We're we're cutting the the BS, so to speak, and we're getting right into their problems. So, you know, um, so what are you guys currently doing for that? Has that been problem questions would be stuff like, um, you know, uh, 
how is is that hard? Is it hard to do what you're currently doing? Um, you know, you have to manually enter in all this data every single time. Is that how long does that take you? Oh, it takes us about 10 hours to do that. You know, and maybe you're offering a service that'll cut that time by 10 X, you know, is that hard? Does that cost you extra wage, extra, you know, payroll just for the hours needed to fulfill that extra work? Okay. And, um, you know, is that maybe causing a dip in, in, uh, cl in, uh, uh, employee morale, you know? Um, okay. And how is that affecting the, the morale of your, you know, team and just things, right. Just, just fleshing out that problem, right. Because we want to magnify that issue, right. This is something that needs to be fixed. Your tire has a hole in it like that. Like we're magnifying that hole. Well, what, well, now you can't drive to work. Now you can't drive to your kid's soccer game. Now you can't, you know, um, you can't drive any right so we're just magnifying that problem right we're asking con contextual things and then implication so, uh, questions go ahead sorry i i think um so i'm i'm going to be going out to do another round of door to door for so for the viewers our my company um we sell a uh, technology product to cannabis dispensaries and um al maybe it, uh without giving away too much info about the product um that we sell do you think um you could like frame some of these in like a good way for like a, somebody I yeah. bump into. So like I have yeah. to get through bud tenders and then I have to talk to a manager and then the manager has to talk to an owner. Um, how do I frame like, who should I be like digging into the problem with? Like, is this only in the call with a decision maker or is this going to be with like, you know, somebody who's a gatekeeper that I have no option, but I have to get through the gatekeeper in order to get to the decision maker. Should I also be kind of using this strategy for them? So I'm like, Kind of using the spin strategy just to get the, the the bud tender or the gatekeeper to let me get through to to the ultimate decision maker kind of like selling them on the idea of just letting me have a meeting with the the person i need to talk to um so they do have a section on you know gatekeepers and and people and influencers they're called in the book uh people who aren't the decision maker and how to pretty much uh, sell them on the you know uh ability to sell it to the decision maker um, you know, you, you definitely want to get the decision maker on the next, uh, call. Um, and, uh, I, d I do need to go back and kind of remember what they talked about there, but, um, you can pretty much use spin questions with this person as well to help them sell it to their, des the decision maker. Um, so it can be used in either the decision maker or the influencer. Um, okay, cool. but yeah, um, Problem questions would be like, are you currently satisfied with the way you're doing this? Is it hard? Whatever. Implication questions would be, how would that affect, you know, your payroll? Is that going to increase that? How is that a, increasing the amount of time that employees need to be there? Um, pretty much implications of these initial issues, right? Downstream effects on costs, uh, what kind of, you know, downstream effects and implications. So we're just magnifying that problem still. Right. And these are, you know, in the book, they mentioned these are almost like you can think of it in childlike terms. These are like sad questions. Right. We're really like digging into that pain and that sadness of like, this is bad. This is bad. Like this. That's a problem. That's a problem. We got to fix this. We got to fix that. That's not good. And then we go on to need payoff questions. Need payoff questions are, you know, so if we were able to improve that, it's taking you 10 hours and we improve that to one hour. How would that help over, like your company overall? You know, well, that would probably reduce the amount of time that we have to have our employees there working and manually inputting that. They would save time. We would save money. Um, how would that impact your bottom line for the next year? You know, well, it would, you know, improve this and improve that. And now we're getting them to say how it will pretty much help. So these are happy questions. So now they're starting to paint their own picture in their head because they're answering our questions and we're not telling them this is going to increase your thing 10x and this is going to increase your profit margins 10x they're telling us so not only are they realizing the benefits but they're realizing it by telling us and we're not telling them so we're not you know hopping on the presentation and like you know telling them this is how it's going to help you this is how it's going to help you so that's why asking questions is helpful because people tell get to tell you and they come up with the conclusion themselves right we've heard the 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 phrase you know uh, let people come to their own conclusions it's more powerful than trying to like force it in on them. Right. So we're kind of like guiding them through these questions. Right. So these are, this is kind of like the investigative portion of it. Right. Now we do a demo as well at, at some point. So we actually, you know, 
once we're getting this information, we do our demo and our demo is ideally um, based around benefits and things that actually fill that need, right? And that actually improve the company, not features, which are facts like, you know, it has 5,000 RPMs and things like this. We were in our spin questions with our problem and implication questions, we're getting needs, we're getting action, you know, buying signals, they they say. Buying signals on a sales call or in a sales interaction are when a prospect says something like, I'm looking for this, we need this. They're, they're already saying, I'm looking for this solution, right? Um, or uh, problem questions are Im implied needs. So yeah, we have a hole in our tire. Or if they say, we need this hole fixed, now that's a need. And then in your demo, you say, this is how we will fix the hole. Does that make sense? Problem questions are, you know, we have a hole in our tire. Need question, need statements are, we need this hole fixed. And in your demo, your benefit is, you know, how we will fix this hole and how it will allow you to drive. So, so okay. Of, so how do you go from the implication questions to the need questions? And like, what would be some need questions? Um, some need questions would be if we improved you know, if we were able to fix this hole, how would that help you drive around? Would that help you get to your kid's soccer game? Yeah, it would. And I'd actually be able to also drive to work and not have to worry about this hole in my tire anymore. Okay. So would, you know, would, would fixing this hole on your tire, would that be helpful? You know, uh, <laughs> would that be helpful to, to you getting around more? Yeah, it would, you know, so need question, need questions would be, um, need. Uh, so it's need payoff, right? So how would this pay off for you? Would this help how would this improve things? Um, and it sounds a bit, it's not super natural for us to say, like, would this help you? You know, um, but it is very important. And need payoff questions are arguably one of the most important questions you can ask because, like I said, it's the happy questions. It's the promise, right? It's the solution. So you really should, you know, and, and it, it's the simple difference of telling them about the promise. Hey, we're going to get you 10x ROI on this and asking them you know, do you think this would give you 10 X ROI, you know? So, um, yeah, there's this guy, there's this guy, Jeremy minor. Have you ever watched Jeremy minor on YouTube? Yep. Yeah. He's pretty cool. Um, I like his style a lot, but one of the ways he kind of does similar to this need, need payoff idea, mm -hmm. he basically will say like, you know, he'll go through all of the questions, sort of like peeling back yep. the, the layers of the onion on the sort of core pain. Like what's the, what's the actual core problem that he needs to address and then he says, well, you know, based on everything that you've told me um, about X, Y, and Z, it sounds like um, yeah. we might, would you mind if I showed you in our demo how we might be able to help you solve some of that? Um, yeah. And then that's how he would kind of lead into the demo once he like got through all those questions. Because that's often a hard part is like, well, do you mind if I like just quickly show you a demo? Some people are like, no, I don't have time. But if you frame it, frame it right, it sounds like that could be really effective. And it sounds like that's what the need payoff questions yeah. kind of naturally lead into is like, yeah. well, you know, if we were able to, to help you solve that problem and ultimately get you, you know, faster payroll, whatever the pro you know, thing that they're trying to achieve is, um, yeah. uh, do, you know, do, would you mind if I'd showed you how our demo might actually, you know, how our product might actually be able to help you that, help you achieve that? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. All right. Keep going with the yeah. need based. Need, need and, but I still need to finish the book actually, but, uh, your demo, once you've asked all these questions, like the prospect is telling you their problems, the implications of these problems and how it's negatively affecting them. And they're also telling you what the, the awesome benefits of what could happen if it's fixed, like, Hey, we could be, be, be making 10 X, you know, and then you go into your demo and say, all right, well, awesome. Let me show you how this is going to do exactly that. Take you from this painful situation to that promise situation that you just told me about. And, um, you know, they also say when you're closing, you really only want, want to close once per sale, ideally. Okay. So, or once per call, uh, whatever you don't want to be like going, you know, close, like trial, close, trial, close, like a bunch. Um, I do think they talk about trial closes actually. And I need to, uh, remember how many trial closes they recommend or how to do that. Um, but you do want to be like, I think they do recommend checking in, you know, with a, with type of a trial close, like, is this making sense for you? Does that sound like something that would work for your business? And they're like, yeah, it does sound like something that would work for your business. Okay. Awesome. Well, if you like, we can go ahead and, and get you started, you know, or whatever. And that's your close. Um, it's, uh, it's just a very, uh, you're pretty much allowing them to decide to move forward once you've kind of confirmed that 
they think it's a good fit, you know, after everything is said and done. So no hard closing, really. Um, I think they do mention trial closes, um, just confirming that they're they're with you. And then uh, a simple, you know, close. And yeah, no hard closes, no multiple closes. And that's kind of uh, the general structure. I do have to finish the book. But yeah, I think it's a very interesting topic. And um, I'm going to be implementing it. And yeah. Cool. One of the things that um, I definitely, I, I've heard Jeremy Miner talk about, which I think is pretty useful is uh, basically like when, when you say, oh, you know, do you think like this could work for your business? Um, and they say, yeah, I think it could work. And then you kind of say, yeah, uh, could you kind of elaborate a little bit for me? Why do you think it, it would actually help you out? And then let them kind of, yep. you know, peel back the, the layers of the onion themselves and tell you why they think it would be really valuable. And then you could say, you know, um, you could get them to, to onboard. What would be a good good framing for getting them to get started? Um, you know, it's like, well, you know, if you if you know, uh, yeah. you think it, if you think it would be good, like, how do you how do you frame that? How do you word that to make it nice and the smooth, clothes. and also to not yeah, the clothes. How do you word that? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, and they do have some closes in the book. I kind of forget. I wish I wrote them down, but I think it is something along the lines of, um, you know, do you think that does it sound like this would work for your business? Okay, great. Um, and then you would go into something like, well, the next steps for getting this implemented would be this. Would you like to move forward with that? Something like that. And you simply say, well, awesome. These would be the next steps and then allow them to, would you be opposed to moving forward with that then today? You know, um, and keep in mind, that's a no oriented question, which, uh, uh, I think it is Chris Voss talks about in his book, Never Split the Difference, which is another decent sales book you guys could check out. But uh, yeah, it would be something like, well, awesome. I'm glad to hear that that would work for your business and solve X, Y, Z problem with this. Um, the next steps would be why um, would, you, would you be opposed to moving forward with that then today, you know, or something like that, um, I think. But don't don't quote me on that, guys. Um, I do have to go back to the closing section of the book. But um, yeah. No hard closes, really. They're, they're kind of against that. Making sure all okay. their problems and, and questions and everything are like building that initial investigative phase and really digging apart the problem and the need and the payoffs is where really great salespeople shine through. And that's sales, that part, the investigative phase and getting them to describe that. So, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's really cool that you brought up Jeremy Miner, actually, because when I was reading this book, the person I thought of was Jeremy Miner, because he's very much an inquisitive. Well, how do you think that would help you? You know, like he mm -hmm. I, I think his method is like partially based in spend selling and he's a great salesman. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's awesome. I think his style is really, really good, too. And yeah. I've had success with it. I like when I was doing a lot of our door to door stuff um, a little while ago, I. I was watching tons of his YouTube shorts, but also like a lot of his like long, uh, he gives like, I think like a monthly or weekly, like long form kind of uh, podcast kind of thing where, he, but he, he just gives advice and stuff, um, answers questions. Um, and I was using tons of his tricks. There's, I, he's, he's awesome. I think he's, he's got a really good style with it. Yeah. So check out that book guys. Um, that What's it said, called? Spin Selling. Spin Selling. Cool. Yeah. Awesome.